Hey everyone, my name is Rebecca and welcome to BITS Project's first webinar. The point of BIT doing these presentations is a way to improve our organization as a whole, but also improve our workflow and understanding the expectations that we have from everyone. Today's main topic that we'll be focusing on is communication. This is just the content slide to which you can refer back to if needed. The goal for this webinar is to practice clear communication in a way that will help us stay connected and work efficiently as we go more remote. I want to highlight that one of our biggest values that our organization is built upon is transparency. And we are always constantly looking for new ways to improve our communication skills. So by the end of this webinar, please let us know if you have any ideas to improve on anything. So what is communication? I have provided a simple definition where communication is an exchange between sharing ideas and information between two or more persons. We got inspired by a company called GitLab and created the Effective and Responsible Communication Guideline. And the first one being is that kindness matters. We want to communicate and talk to others in a way, in a kind way, and we need to be mindful of what we say. So for instance, when you talk through messaging flat platforms, you can feel like you can say anything. But just remember, if you wouldn't say it to them in person, do not um, text it to them. We only want to stay positive and big. Express your thoughts. We probably all live in different locations and often have different perspectives. We want to know your thoughts, opinions, and feelings on projects. All opinions are completely valid and will be taken into account for. Third is feedback is essential. This is practically one of the most important ones. We encourage team members to give and receive feedback in a considerate way. Do not be afraid to get, to get any feedback, but please give it also in a respective way. Four, one-on-ones are very, very important in this organization. We need to implement this practice more, and we are because sometimes it's more effective to take some conversations through a face-to-face -face conversation, such as on Zoom. Moreover, it ensures that directors and members are on the same page, and as well as that, we can build better relationships around this organization if we talk one-on-one. -on -one. We always want to improve as a whole, and one-on-one -on -one helps us reassess BIT as an organization. The fifth one, everyone is a moderator. Meaning, if you have any concerns about anything that you see, please report it or talk to someone about it one-on-one. -on -one. And we are always here to talk if you guys need to. So if we are going remote, what you know, communication channels do we use? So we're going to use Slack, Calendly, Zoom, Google Calendar, and GitHub. And we'll talk about all of them um, more in depth. So the first one is being Slack. It is your responsibility to learn how to use this platform, but luckily the user interface is pretty friendly and easy to use. But specifically in this webinar, we'll talk about the etiquette of using Slack. So one of them is um, major decisions should not be made on Slack because messages will delete within eight days. <laughs> Private DMs versus public channels. This is a big issue that we've been having, but we're currently fixing it. So I cannot stress it enough, but everyone needs to make an effort and start posting on public channels and less sending messages on private DMs because it discourages collaboration and provides less feedback. It's also simply not efficient because people start getting confused on who is doing what. I will provide some examples of when you can post on a private DM and when you can post on a public channel. But just remember, there's a rule of thumb that we have so if someone can benefit from the question or idea that you have, then post on the public channel anyways. But obviously, if it's a private matter that you're super uncomfortable with sharing to everyone, go ahead and DM someone about it. And if a person sends you a work-related message, just tell them nicely, hey, thanks for reaching out. That's a great question, but I think the team can benefit from it. So you should post in the hashtag respective public channel. So on the left hand side is an example of a private DM. So this girl's asking, hey, you going to IIT, which is a boba place? 
And then the guy is like, oh, I'm at the MU. So obviously this discussion does not involve anything about bit or and it's a personal um, question or idea, which means it should be um, DM privately. All right. And then on the right is an example of a public channel. Even though the girl is referring to a specific person, it still needs to be public posted on the public channel. So everyone in the team is up to date on what's happening. In a way, it can keep everyone accountable as well. We have this quota that we're trying to reach at the end of every month, 55, 25, and 20, meaning 55 of the of discussion should be taken on public channels. 25 of discussion should be, 25% of discussion should be taken on private channels and 20% of discussion should be taken on private DMs. So perhaps now you're wondering, oh, what channel should I use? Well, each channel should have a short description on what the channel is about. But if you're confused, please ask a team member or a supervisor if you need to clear anything up. Just another tip, um, please refrain from using at channel or at here too much. Okay, so we also started using an application called Hey Taco where we can give shout outs to people in like a cute way so too often we get caught up in our work and forget to recognize each other and celebrate each other's work so all you have to do is all you have to do is add that taco emoji in your little shout out uh and it'll notify them so you can see in the bottom just right here this guy was like hey thanks to these two people for helping redesign the slides and then, you know, people give emojis back for appreciation. And this is something that we do. And we encourage you guys to do that as well. Fewer messages equals fewer notifications. I want us to start posting your ideas or questions in one post rather than a ton of posts. We should practice avoiding cluttering people with notifications. <laughs> getting, getting everything you need in a single direct message means that only one notification is sent to the channel or person. This helps your ideas and thoughts to be clear and concise, which causes less interruptions within the channel. So here is an example of cluttering. In this one, you can probably get 10 notifications. Rather, it can be condensed into two or three notifications slash messages. When there are a lot of pings, um, it can be overwhelming and it can be distracting to people in the channel. Um, so please be mindful of when you're sending messages because I don't know about you guys, but when I hear like pings go off, like my mind is like, I need to check what's going on all the time. So it's definitely distracting to me. For real, start using threads. Um, this is another way to avoid being cluttering. Members can talk without tripping the unread indicator for everyone else in the channel, meaning that not everyone in the channel will get the notification. It allows for an ongoing conversation while keeping the main channel clear. But if you want people to know what you're talking about in the thread, there's like a little checkbox below your message and you can click on it and hit send and it'll post on the public channel as well in the thread. So here's a quick example of a couple of people using a thread. You can see that even though it was just a couple of people setting up a Zoom account, it was posted on a public channel, which is what you're supposed to do, but it was not cluttering the chat because we were using a thread on discussing on when to meet and why. This is more of a tip, but you can replace short follow-up messages with emoji reactions. So this is just a short emoji glossary where a check mark can mean um, completed or approved, a thumbs up can mean I agree or understand, a little heart thing can mean I love it or I appreciate it, it can mean a lot of different things actually. We understand that you guys are probably really busy in college, but please remember to respond whenever you can. It would be really efficient if you guys can respond within 24 hours. Also, if you guys are busy for a certain amount of time, just let um, your director or supervisor know. If you're busy on midterms, vacation, sick, personal reasons, just go ahead and send it to them in direct message and let them know it in advance so we don't assign to you, you know, any task to do during that week. Sorry about that. All right, so the next one is Zoom. 
please use please learn how to use it on your own time it's pretty simple we have this thing where everyone introduces themselves at the beginning of a zoom call just like any real meeting or social event you don't want to initiate a conversation between people you haven't met before it would be pretty awkward if you start the meeting without like introducing yourself so let your members know who you are just another tip Please have a work appropriate background and if your background is a little too noisy, meet yourself. I really cannot stress that enough because there's a lot of times where I've been in Zoom meetings and I can't like hear people well because like someone's background is really noisy. So please be mindful and mute yourself. All right. We like to document our meetings because some people who cannot go to the meeting can super easily catch up without having to contact us and ask us. Um, but obviously, we will ask for your consent to record the meeting beforehand. So please make sure that your camera is on. These videos are only going to be for us and they won't be like posted publicly. If you are uncomfortable with this, this idea, please let me, Shreya, Daniel, Kevin, or your supervisor, or anyone know. And leave the Zoom um, quietly. We expect that everyone should come to the meeting prepared and on task and stay on task. Make sure you guys understand what the meeting is about and what deliverables you need to complete before the meeting. We only want Zoom calls to be 30 to 90 minutes um, because everyone's fairly busy, but obviously there are exceptions such as department meetings, team meetings, and all that. We do not allow hybrid calls because we want to be as professional as we can. Hybrid calls are when two or more persons are using the same camera, headset, and screen. In BIT, everyone should have their own because we won't be able to hear you well, we can miss on important conversations, and we won't be able to tell who is talking. So please have your own equipment, meaning every participant should have their own like screen. You know, even if you're in the same room as another person, please have your own, you know, equipment. In a Zoom meeting, it's definitely okay to interrupt the speaker. I know that when you're in a call and you wanna have some input, the lie can make it seem like you're really interrupting the person, but feel free to talk in between. We want the meeting to be of discussion because it improves the quality of our work. But also, again, be mindful of how many times you interrupt because it can make the discussion longer than necessary. This is a general outline of how your first meeting will go. So again, um, introductions saying hi my name is blank and then if we're going to record the meeting we'll be like um, do we get your consent to record the meeting give me a thumbs up say verbal yes we'll also assign someone to take meeting notes on our meeting template which I will show you guys and talk about it later the host will tell you what the meeting is about and the goals mute yourself if needed at the end the people should understand or the participants should understand what was discussed and what your next steps are some people will schedule, schedule another meeting if necessary. I also want to um, highlight this, that it is your responsibility to remember what was discussed during the meeting. So even though we have someone assigned to take notes, you need to take your own notes if you're, I don't know, a forgetful person or something. All right, Calendly. So you guys don't need your own account because only supervisors, directors have their own calendar. So it allows us allows us to find the best time for one-on-one -on -one meetings. So one-on-one -on -one meetings happen basically between every week between a member and a supervisor. And they're really short, they're like 15 minutes long. So all supervisors will have their Calendly link in their um, Slack description profile. So if you guys need to make a one-on-one, -on -one, um, you can just find your supervisor Slack, look at their profile description, and click on the link, and you can schedule it from there. Okay, Google Calendar. So for the reason we use Google Calendar, it helps us all stay in the same schedule, even though we are living in different time zones. Because we go more and more remote, there will be a good amount of virtual meetings. So having Google Calendar will increase one of our values, which is transparency. All Calendly events are linked to the calendar. Socials will be on the calendar as well. And if you receive an invite, um, you should RSVP as soon as possible. 
and you'll get access to our Google Calendar in an email that we send you guys. All right. So how do you use it? Basically, just referring back to before, one-on-ones are going to be on there. Team and department meetings, if you're setting them up, you need to add it in the calendar. Invite all the members. So find their emails and invite the members. Um, include the Zoom meeting link in the description so everyone on the day can go back and click on it. All right. GitHub is the platform where we'll take meeting notes. There will be another webinar that talks more about GitHub um, if you guys are confused about this. So why do we document um, meeting notes um, based on three things, availability, accountability, and readability. So availability, we take meeting notes because uh, if people can't go to the meeting or they forget to go, they can refer back to the meeting notes and understand what was discussed accountability in the meeting notes it will document um who is responsible for doing what so it increases transparency and holds ac ourselves accountable for doing our own work especially doing it on time and reliability notes acts as a condensed record of the most important discussions suggestions and decisions made from the meeting so how are you going to document meeting notes? And this is just a general idea. So team leaders will add the meet to the meeting, to the agenda three days before, sorry. Everyone will update the agenda one day before the meeting. And a note taker is responsible to, you know, record the important notes during the meeting. Obviously, again, you guys are encouraged to take your own notes and, you know, because you need to remember what was discussed. And sometimes the note taker can miss some information. So I'm going to take you guys to the meeting notes, an example. So you go to GitHub, all right, and then we go here. Let me just show you from this way. So this is the bit project, right? And you go down to the respiratories, and we're going to find meetings. All right, and this is the meeting template right here. So I can show you guys more on what I mean by, like, updating three days before so this is what you guys need to do three days well this is what the leaders need to do three days before um one day before and this is what it looks like so obviously we're going to assign people what to do what we talked about updates action plans all that good stuff and that's what the meeting notes are going to look like and what you guys are going to practice on later okay um this is the first webinar, so thank you for listening. Um, hope you guys have a good day.